Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Anwar Youssef Dunbar, and this is Big Discussions 76, Entertainment and Media. First of all, please like this video, please share it, and please subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you want to throw something in the tip jar, that information is below in the description box. And also, please consider joining the Big Words LLC newsletter. I just sent the first uh, one out today to those individuals who signed up. So thank you to those individuals. Well, everyone, this is going to be a short uh, offering. I just wanted to give uh, some reaction to uh, Top Gun Maverick starring uh, the great Tom Cruise. I was originally going to see it uh, this past Saturday, but it got late and I decided to uh, do it early Sunday afternoon uh, this way I would be a little more rested and I'd also get a cheaper movie ticket or should I say a less expensive movie ticket so it turned out to be uh, worth the the ten dollars and some odd cent that I paid for it of course you know the snacks are always overpriced uh, and I think I could have gotten a smaller uh, tub of popcorn than the one that I got because I didn't finish my large but it was a good uh, investment uh, it was very entertaining I have no complaints uh, about the movie um, and I think it um, I'm a simple movie goer and all I want to do when I enter that theater is to uh, escape from the real world I want to get sucked into story I want to get sucked into an adventure i want to go away someplace i don't i don't notice every little nook and cranny and nuance and screen angle and i don't i don't notice everything and sometimes um i have to watch movies multiple times before i see the thing that someone like my brother amal saw but i am a simple movie goer and i was satisfied uh, with the two hours and 11 minutes that I spent uh, inside of that theater in Northern uh, Virginia. Uh, so just briefly, and a uh, shout out to Artisan MC. I went up on his panel for a few minutes last night to give my thoughts on the movie. And they, they're they basically as follows. I, I, I'm a bit of a traditionalist, so especially when it's an older movie or the predecessor is an older movie i really enjoy when the newer movie uh, pays homage to the older movie and it stays consistent and it stays in line with the previous story and what the previous story was about in terms of in terms of the characters in terms of the story world um I, that, that's what I like to see. If it isn't broke, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I think that that's what they did here. You know, the main character was Maverick. Um, the first movie he trained at uh, Top Gun. Uh, his nickname was pretty much in line uh, with his personality. And I think, if I recall correctly from that first movie, he had to learn how to uh, be a part of a team and not put everyone else at risk. And they had to get used to him and his way of doing things as well. And that, and that was part of the friction between him and Iceman, played by Val Kilmer, in the first movie. And at the end, they wound up, um, Maverick wound up earning Iceman's respect. Also, uh, partway through that first movie, um, Maverick, uh, lost his co-pilot Goose, played by Anthony Edwards, who we know from ER. Uh, and both of those threads um, were furthered in Top Gun Maverick. Uh, his friendship with Iceman, uh, and also uh, Goose's with Goose's son uh, Rooster in this movie. Uh, just briefly, and I, I mentioned this on Artisan's panel last night. I I like the fact that they did put Val Kilmer uh, in this movie. That's a spoiler for anyone who hasn't seen it. So if you hadn't seen it, well, 
Now you know Val Kilmer is in it. Uh, I, I did do a quick search on Val Kilmer before the movie, and because I had seen that he had had some health problems, uh, I believe it was throat cancer. And what they did, which was brilliant, was that they wrote up Iceman, um, not only to show the, 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 the ongoing friendship with him, with, with Maverick, but also Iceman was um, experiencing the same health issues as Val Kilmer. So he was right there in the middle of the movie. He and Maverick slash Tom Cruise, they had a friendship moment uh, and uh, with a joke at the end, but I thought that they they did a good job showing that camaraderie from the first movie to the second movie. Um, it was, you know, all the elements were there. Uh, action, humor, uh, character building, uh, a mission at the end. Someone, I think it was on Artisan's panel, pointed out that they had to go and disable a target in another country they didn't tell us which country it was was it china was it the was it russia they didn't specify but they had to basically go to this other country and um carry out this mission uh the movie represented what i thought was uh the the changing of the guard or the raising up of a a newer a younger generation uh, Goose's son Rooster uh, was a part of that generation and part of his arc was learning to uh, assert himself and not think when in his plane and, and when in battle and uh, that was just a, a key thread uh, in the movie. Um, a passing of the torch, a changing of the guard from uh, Maverick's generation to this younger uh, generation. So there was a team of pilots. Miles Teller played um, Rooster. Uh, Glenn Powell played Hangman. Uh, Monica Barbaro, Barbaro played Phoenix. Uh, Jeffrey Ellis played uh, Payback. Uh, Manny Jacinto played Fritz. Uh, let's see, Danny Ramirez played Fanboy. And they even had a moment uh, reminiscent of the the volleyball game, playing with the boys, the volleyball game where they were all on the on the beach with their with their chests glistening, playing volleyball. Uh, if you're into sports, uh, Jim Rome made fun of that scene uh, quite a bit. So there were a lot of callbacks to the original movie. Uh, another powerful one, which showed the audience that Maverick was still dealing with uh, losing Goose uh, was when uh, Rooster uh, gathered together in uh, Jennifer Connelly, Connelly's bar, who was the love interest for Maverick in this movie. Uh, Rooster sits down at the piano and plays Great Balls of Fire, just like uh, his father uh, uh, Goose did years earlier. and. Uh, Maverick sees that and he's kind of stopped there in his tracks just reminiscing on Goose and now Rooster and and, and, and realizing that they're going to have to cross that bridge. They're going to have to both find peace with that and move forward somehow. So I thought it was good. I, I don't really have much else to say about it. I, I thought that the, the, the in terms of the, the flight scenes, I thought the cinematography was was stellar you know you you really got a feel for what the, those cockpits were like and I, I remember at times in the theater I was feeling kind of claustrophobic uh, imagining being in those cockpits the, the, the scenes of the, of the planes flying and the banking right and the banking left and them flying close to the ground those were all stellar the, the dog fights were stellar um, I liked the scientific explanations of flight that they uh, that they shared with the audience during the trainings. Being a scientist and a, a STEM advocate and having a, a science and technology YouTube channel, I've sat in on discussions about flight and there's a lot of science involved in that. And I thought that another important thing that they discussed at the beginning is something that's happening now 
and that's machines taking over. And so um, Ed Harris, in the beginning, he and Maverick have a moment. Uh, Maverick wants to test uh, some sort of um, stealth aircraft. I want to call it a Blackbird, but it could be something else. I, I'm not a master of aircraft. Um, but one of the things Ed Harris' character, uh, the Admiral, said was, you know, your kind is going extinct. Pretty soon there are going to be machines doing what you do. We're not going to need organic human uh, pilots anymore. So I thought, I thought that was powerful. And another, and I'm going to, I'm going to close with this. Another powerful uh, bit of dialogue was the fact that a discussion with I think John John Hamm's character and Charles Parnell's character. Uh, with Maverick, um, which involved the fact that he was still a captain, and he had not advanced to admiral, or he had not advanced beyond a certain point. And for some people working in organizations or in the military or wherever you are, there are some times when you hit a ceiling, and there are some times when you don't advance beyond where you are for any number of reasons. So that that particular scene spoke to me uh, for reasons I won't get into right now. But all in all, I thought it was a good movie. It was very entertaining. And I think the most important thing is that they stayed close to what the original movie was and was about. Uh, there were no narratives in the movie where you thought that someone was preaching to you about how you should feel and how you should think about certain issues so I thought it was it was very very good I don't foresee them doing another one and I I was pleased uh, I thought Jennifer Connelly played well as his love interest her daughter was in it there were some funny moments there and um, yeah that's pretty much all I'll say the ending tricked me for a little bit. I thought someone was going to die, but the writers threw me for a loop there. And I think that I'll just, I won't give that away. So I'm going to stop this here. That's my reaction to Top Gun Maverick. I liked it. I recommend it. And um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments section below if you've seen it. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Once again, if you want to throw something in the tip jar, that information is below in the description box. If, also, please consider joining the Big Words LLC newsletter. In addition to being a YouTube content creator, I am also a writer. So enjoy the rest of your day or your night or whenever you are watching this. And as always, remember that your attitude determines your altitude. Take care, and I will talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.